So now Tilman Schill from About Something will talk about um, chatbots uh, versus discovery systems and it's, uh, especially, I think, the uh, ask bot that uh, got um, yes, um, um, introduced or at least promoted by the uh, FEP uh, in Berlin. Um, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I'm very much looking forward to this talk as well. And yes, now we are speaking, I think, about the elephant. Um, yeah, I thought it's the last talk before lunch, so a bit of an attention-grabbing headline. Um, so the first lesson about artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, it's fine, um, is um, expectation management. So the first part of the ex expectation management is um, half an hour is not a lot. So we are holding a webinar on, on the 23rd of October about AI, so you're all free, of course, you're welcome to join. Also, uh, I'm the, the CEO of About Something, so I'm not a technical guy. So excuse me if I excuse myself when uh, not going into too much detail on technical issues, but usually I'm, I'm, I'm good enough to, to um, kind of judge the, the, the outcomes of what, what is being discussed. So that has to be enough. So why an AI chatbot? Of course, we had the um, discussions a lot with the, with the FEP, um, so the the, universe, uh, the public libraries of Berlin. Um, the one thing is uh, an, an anecdotal evidence um, of a friend of mine who has three kids. Uh, when we went into uh, designing our chatbot, I asked the 15-year-old how he um, uh, how he uses ChatGPT, and he said, you know. If I want to learn something, I go to YouTube. If I want to get orientation, I go to Google. But if I want an answer, I go to ChatGPT. And that's, an, that's a 15-year-old. Um, and I think especially for universities, there's a generation now in universities and definitely coming up that uh, uses chatbots more frequently than it does Google. Uh, and I think um, that is um, a, a, a pattern of, of discovering uh, uh, things that is, is significantly different from what we are used to. Also, um, the, and, and this is also one of the exper um, experiences that we have, you, you just find different things. Uh, we have heard um, today numerous times that known item search is, is uh, what is mostly used. The thing is, we, we have here a conversation. So you, you can just narrow down your choices. You can also develop your your ideas or your inspirations about something. So you actually end up with different discoveries than you might do when you know what you're searching for. So conversations and answers, of course, some relief to librarians. Um, that's a bit of um, 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 uh, a strategical issue that I will touch today, but which is, I think, topic of another course is whether you use it as a recommendation system, whether you use it as a service, for answering things, where is the cafeteria, um, or is an internal knowledge system for regulation for for regulations of a library that you might want to get into? By the way, it speaks all languages. Um, actually, we have a talk on languages in the future because it doesn't speak all languages. So um, we got uh, a complaint by the National Library of Serbia you know, that the smaller languages are not as well developed as as bigger languages. I consider this though um, a question of time. By the way, uh, and this is why we are started um, going into it, it's fun. Um, and I think it's something that has to be stressed more than uh, actually you might think, because um, we, we are in the very early stages of a technology. And I think the best way to learn about the technology is just to play with it. And I mean, we are a service, we are not a library. Uh, we, we are just dependent on people at libraries having fun and playing with it. Because, for example, the prompting, I'll come to that later, so basically giving the commands to the, um, um, to the bot, is something that has to be done to, to some extent by the libraries. And without having fun in doing it, uh, it's a tedious task. So fun is important in life, but also with um, artificial intelligence. So I'm not doing a live demo here. It works. I mean, it's, it's a pretty straightforward bot. This is the website of the FEP. On the bottom right, there is um, uh, this, this sign. Um, the only thing I want to, to mention here in, in this talk is that this year, um, 
is, is actually one of the most discussed topics that we have, the design of the bot. Because again, about, um, artificial intelligence is about expectation management. What I personally expect here is one of these help buttons that are on Vodafone and on Telecom that I never use. Um, and um, so I'm, I'm not so happy in uh, this bot being there. I would have been more happy in it here, um, but that's also kind of not what the bot is about because it can answer questions um, about the cafeteria or what happens if I want to prolong my library card and stuff. So it's kind of something in between or, or something actually unique or new. And how to represent that in a, in a graphical element is already a strategic decision, um, a very important strategic decision because of course, when you open this, there's an intro text. This is this is a this is a system that allows you to find books, but of course nobody reads this stuff. So I heard you know putting little info buttons somewhere from um, from the people from Berlin. Don't nobody reads it. Um, people just type and um, um, evaluate their interaction based on the reaction that they get, not based on an info text they they read beforehand. You know, this is just not how the internet works. So this is it. Um, for me, one of the issues here that I wanted to show you, there's a list of three results, which are basically the recommendation. Um, you can try it yourself. It's open. You don't have to register at the Berlin libraries. The point is, for me, also part of the expectation management. What is the technology? What is the configuration? Uh, so what is what the li Berlin libraries choose to do? And what is uh, the limitations or the, the, the things um, that, that come with the technology as such. So for example, um, we have three, um, we have three uh, titles that are the result of that. Um, it could be five, it could be 10. To take three is a decision of the Berlin libraries. Also to limit the conversations to, I think we have now eight Q and A pairs, that's the configuration, it can be 20. Um, the, the point I want to make here is that these configurations play into um, the, the, um, the, the money that it costs because every um, single question and answer pair costs tokens and tokens cost money. So we have to configure it in a way where on the one hand you have a user satisfaction and on the other hand you have cost control. So these are trade-offs that you have to make. Um, luckily enough for the moment, the prices for tokens and, and usage go down could be different in the future. You just have to make um, experiences around this. Um, and um, so that's, I think, important to know that not everything what you see is kind of the technology as such. It's also a choice of the library to do, to apply this technology in a specific way. Um, so why did I say search is over? First of all, as I said, um, I think um, uh, the, the user behavior will go this way. Actually, I'm convinced. I, I'm, I'm also anecdotal. I have um, a primary source, um, anecdotal anecdotical uh, uh, and proof it's me and myself because I'm I used to use Google of course like everybody and I, I forced myself to use ChatGPT because somehow I have a professional link to ChatGPT but now I, I would estimate that just naturally um, I use ChatGPT 70% for, for my research now because I get an answer so um, instead of searching um, for, with keywords and phrases for known items, as we have seen, we can, I can narrow down what, what I, I'm searching for in the dialogue. Um, also, I'm just really tired. Once I've learned that there's a better way, I'm just really tired of going through search results. You know, I mean, if, if, if a specific answer answers my question, why would I go through the results? You know, if I'm happy with the answer, I'm fine. Um, so... And, um, and also I just can type in whatever, you know, I just need, don't need to think about search terms before I go for it, which I think, I mean, for me, who's, who's kind of also, I mean, my university times are long gone, but I'm kind of familiar with searching for stuff that I need for my, for, for my, for my um, whatever I do for my projects. If somebody's not so familiar with it, you know, I, I think I'm, 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 I'm expecting that you have to know what you want before you actually start searching, which kind of is the way of traditional search. It's, 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 and actually, I, I really, really love this presentation of the um, um, Staatsbibliothek Berlin. When, when you see the, 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 the answers to the questions that they pose, you know, where, where is stuff? You know, we, we're, 
we expected to just type and see and go. And I think this is way more natural in, 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 in chatting with, um, with um, uh, um, a bot than it is with a search. By the way, in the moment we type, if, if, you, have no, if, if you have tried, actually you, use, you have to use VPN because of European um, policies, um, the new um, um, language, uh, the new um, audio models of ChatGPT, they're really impressive. I think in, in, in the not so far future, you will talk you know, and uh, with whatever AI is out there, which basically sets the requirements, actually the, the kind of the entry barrier for, for researching stuff even lower. Um, so I think th there's a lot of, uh, th there's a lot of um, 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 potential in, uh, in AI in, in, in getting um, people to discover things that are like not as educated in using uh, search or discovery systems as we are. Um, and I think this, I, I, I totally go with the point that, you know, you have to look where the people are who want to use these things, then, you know, our own little world. So this is um, um, a system overview. Um, actually, in the talks before this, before my talk, I realized that I should have been a bit more careful because not everything that is on this is actually already in action. So this is, um, part of it is already in action. Some of it um, is, is about to be, um, or is being developed. Um, so, um, we understand it this way. This, okay, no, that's better. So, so, I just walk you through it a little bit. So, we have a public library um, which uses um, a library management system. And in the case of FEP, it's Aztec, but we integrate with Axia, with Daytronic. Um, uh, we, are having a, we are developing a Coha plugin right now um, that delivers data. At the moment, we do um, Mark 21. Uh, HTML and PDF is in development. Um, this Mark 21 is chunked up into so-called snippets. So basically, there's, these are um, chunks, text Bausteine. Um, these snippets are um, um, stored in our snippets database. Um, once they're in the database, um, they can also be adapted. They can be updated. Um, they are then sent to in this case, OpenAI, they have a so-called embedding API. Um, we use ADA2, I think, which turns um, the text snippet into a, a vector. A vector is a numerical representation of, uh, of numbers. So basically, it's a very long number that tells you um, what actually is in the snippet, but not only kind of um, a literal translation, but also in terms of context. This is why um, language models are so powerful. Um, the vector. So this large number is then stored in our vector database, um, and um, there it sits. So basically, this is the, the metadata input workflow. Um, as I said, you, we usually don't work directly with the libraries. We, use, uh, we work with the, uh, with the lab BMS in German, ILS in English, with the library management systems because they sit on all the data. Um, but doesn't have to be that way. As long as it's defined and we can process it, we can, we can take everything. Now it's in the vector database, the data that we want to talk about. And then we go to the conversation. So how does the conversation work? There's a user there, the yellow one, um, and he talks with our bot. Um, in the moment, he can um, or she can talk with text, so just um, typing in. I think in the very near future, we'll have audio and image um, uh, input as well. So you can actually put in uh, a, um, uh, uh, an image of the Mont Blanc, and then you can ask, you know, are there any books about this mountain? And you'll get an answer. Actually, I think from, from a practical point of view or from a technology point of view, that will not be so difficult. The only thing is that image processing just takes way more tokens. So it will be more expensive. But also pricing, I think, will change there. So, um, and then the bot um, takes this user input, also sends it to the embedding API. Um, the user input will then be turned into also, again, a vector, a number. And then there will be um, a similarity search between the vector that the user has put in and the vector that is already with the metadata that is already sitting in the um, database. And a similarity search is happening here. So the similarity search is actually the point where the user request is matched with the data um, that we hold in our database. 
the results are then provided to the large language model. The large language model turns it into actually the conversational part, so the answer. Uh, and then the answer is fed, fed back to the bot, and um, the bot displays it to the user. And if the user poses a follow-up question, this whole circle, vector, vector database, similarity search, large language model, bot, user, begins again. So this is the basic workflow. Um, actually, to, to implement something like that in a website is easy. It takes half a day. The, the, um, um, ChatGPT has an API, so you can um, uh, work with this API and put it in. The thing is that in each and every step here, there's work to be done. You can have better chunking uh, mechanisms. Um, you can have um, 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 more dimensions in the vector representation. Um, you can have here what I what's not in here. You have the prompts. The prompts are kind of the um, the, the commands that you give the bet, um, a chat bot on how to behave. So, you know, make a formal greeting. Uh, I think the FEP has prompted, don't use smileys. I don't know why, but it's part of the prompt. So on each of these um, um, uh, um, steps, you can make improvements. And this is what we actually do every day. Um, also, the technology is improving. So um, I put here... Actually, it's in preparation of the webinar that we're holding in, uh, at the end of October. So, for example, um, it's not only that you get more and more powerful language models. It's also that the technologies um, adjacent to um, um, uh, artificial intelligence get better. So you can use a graph, a knowledge graphs to improve the results. Cool Poly, for example, is something that if you want to talk with a PDF, which I think um, uh, for, um, for knowledge management inside a library, but also for university libraries, is way more interesting. Um, that, that also processes the images and, the, for example, the excels of a, of a paper. Um, Coligraph is a technology that actually um, uh, um, reads the paper in a visual way, so to speak. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's an artificial intelligence. It's, um, it's, uh, it's an image artificial intelligence. Um, results to be seen, but it's just very fresh, you know, it's like months. Uh, th th this, is, um, this is out there. And so, so the technology and improving the answers is not only about the LLM, you know, the bigger and bigger and bigger models, what's always in the press, it's also the technology around it that can improve it. Um, and um, so this is why I think it, it's really just the beginning. You know, I'm old enough to remember the first days of the internet. Um, I, I think, I don't know who's, who else is of my advanced age, but, you know, we are in a stage where the, the modem with the internet made ding, 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 and you were hoping that some, you know, connection would be established. You know, this is where we are. And I think what we are developing right now already hints into a future that will be way more advanced than, you know, the things that you might bother with today. Um, I have, I made something here, um, the Reservation Service Knowledge Management Bot. I, I have noticed that um, in conversations about um, um, language bots, um, th th there needs to be um, a better understanding about what we are talking about. Um, so, for example, in the beginning, we just said, you know, we make an AI bot for libraries. Um, then, um, so we, we started, and, and what we actually started with was a recommendation bot. So we took all the Mark 21 data of the Berlin libraries, 4 million data sets. We imported them, put them into knowledge graphs. And then they asked um, the, the women and men on the, on, on the help desks, what are the, actu the questions you actually get? And, of course, the questions they get is, where's the toilet? You know, where's the, where's the cafe? So what we did was we added to the recommendations that were the core of this project in the beginning, we added service questions. Um, so actually, we prompted the service questions in. So in the moment, actually, if you ask for opening hours, you'll get a correct answer. Actually, you get a link to the opening hours on the website of the FEP, which, by the way, um, um, not eliminates, but almost eliminates all the hallucinations if you take a specific link. Um, and we also did all the other service questions into prompting. Of course, the way to do it, and this is what we're doing now, is to actually take it directly from the knowledge base of, for example, in this case, Aztec, the, the library management system. So that is the service bot. 
You know, but also, and this is also what we're developing right now, is the knowledge bot. So you cannot only use it for, you know, front services, you can also use it for internal purposes. So Berlin is more than 80 libraries, local libraries, with different sets of data, different rules. So in order to, to take all these people, we have this, or, or as you all know, if a new person arrives at um, an institution or a company, nobody ever has time for onboarding. I think um, a, a chatbot is a perfect onboarding tool. And the last thing, and I think this is kind of the king, the, the, the big discipline is, of course, we, we talk about uh, books, media items. The, 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 the big, for, for us, the, the most fun part, of course, is to talk with the media. So to, to not only have the summaries of the media in order to generate recommendations, but to be able to ask, I don't know, the, the standard works of Schopenhauer, um, uh, where in, in which book he always hates Hegel, which is probably a long list of uh, footnotes that, that comes out of it. But um, of course, also in science, you know, in, 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 uh, you can, can you prove this and this claim? Uh, who is the author of the proof in maths? And uh, can you link, you know, link it to him? This is what you really want to do in the future. Um, it's a technology, it's a cost thing because of course contexts and therefore tokens cost a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a legal thing because if you use um, proprietary publications, you have to have a contract or at least an agreement with the publisher. But of course it's also um, um, a technical thing because you want to be precise in what you do and you want to have the footnotes correct. This is where actually this um, uh, graph rack, so using knowledge graphs to make more precise predictions where you find something in a medium uh, comes along. So I think it helps very much in the conversations to understand where in this all these things that a knowledge bot can do, service, recommendation, uh, knowledge, Actually, we, we the last one is BookBot, a, a, a name I hate. I d just don't find any better one for now. Um, where you are in this discussion, that helps. Um, um, because, of course, as I said, it's expectation management. Pe you, you need to know what people want to know. Cost, um, just very briefly, it's, it's actually cheaper than we thought, even. So if you have a library management system, uh, different, it's actually up to the library management systems. If we are integrated with the BMS or EAS, uh, we have no initial cost in setting it up. So it could be nothing, uh, it could be more if uh, the library management system has, let's say, different policies. I think the main, the, we, we worried a lot about tokens in the beginning. Uh, and thankfully, um, the, the pricing for tokens went down for considerably uh, when we, um, um, after we started off. I mean, we use for the FIP, we use now 3.5. We're in the process of going to um, um, 4.0 mini. That's actually for pricing reasons um, because of course the more advanced models are uh, way more expensive. Um, so again, there's a trade-off between quality and, and money. Also, interestingly, um, one of the learnings, the prompts that you use for one model don't work is in the same way as the new model. So whenever you change a model, be it inside the ChatGPT family or if you use Llama, you always have to redo all your tests again because you might, with a new model, you might get different answers than before. So it's, it's really, it's, it's nothing you do just like that. Even you could technically, but the results are different. So that's the maintenance and support part. It's a very quickly evolving technology. You have to be um, uh, working with it, you have to make your experiences with it. And of course, that's time. Time is people, people cost money. So that, this is where the music plays. It pretty much depends on how, how much support you need. So um, to sum it up, um, for me, the, the, the main difference between a chatbot and uh, um, a discovery system is a question versus an answer. I have a question, I search for something, and here I just um, get an answer immediately without having to search in the search results. I think this is, this for me is kind of the, the main difference between the two. Of course, the main or the goal of everybody would be to have an AI decide which of these two processes would better fit to a specific answer. So I would like the AI to choose, okay, I initiate a search or, you know, I enter more deeply in the conversation to actually find out what the user wants. So, so these are the hybrid workflows. Also, a lot of science going on, on on these hybrid workflows. 
But I can foresee a day where, where actually you just have this one uh, front end, this one typing in, and then depending on the type of the question, on the, on the content of the question, it either initiates a search or in um, uh, the LLM in the background and provides the best possible answer to this particular use case. So in the end, we're all looking at the same stars. We're just um, uh, choosing different paths to explore them. You know, so I hope I waken you up in the beginning. Now you can sleep and eat. Um, and um, as I said, it's a vast topic. Uh, we decided, uh, based on the incredible amount of interest we get, uh, we got from the last webinar, we decided to make quarterly webinars about different aspects of it. The upcoming webinars about um, all these um, words that I'm using, so tokens, graph rags, rags, um, uh, um, uh, uh, vectors, what is a vector database, what makes it different from another, from the other databases. So this will be our upcoming thing. The, the webinar after will be about language. So, you know, what, what, what does happen? And we, we, we have, I think, 48 nations now in our webinar, which I find totally fascinating. Um, but, you know, what, what about can large language models work in all these languages? The answer is actually they don't, or not in the same quality. So I think we, we were interesting, interested in also exploring that topic. And um, so, yeah, the, these are my contacts. Um, you can also go to the website. You can register to everything of it. You can ask me. Um, sadly, I have to run quarter past one. So um, if you want to talk to me, grab me now. Um, and uh, that's it. Or you can, of course... Now ask a question. So that was it.